In today's episode, I install point motors on the layout, build a platform for the station, and get on with ballasting the track. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, That Model Railway Guy, for another exciting episode of building a 009 layout inside a suitcase. Once again, I'm really pleased to say that this episode is sponsored by D-Rails. They're one of my favourite model railway retailers to use and a lot of the stuff I'm using throughout this series was bought through them. So, in the previous episode I laid all the track, got it wired up and I was running my very first trains on the layout. Today I'm hoping to make a start on some of the basic scenery like getting the platform in place and doing the ballasting too. But before I get to that, I need to install all the point motors. So let's head over to the layout and I'll get to work. So in the past, I used servo motors to control points and signals on my main layout. But this time I wanted to try something different. So I've decided to use solenoid point motors instead. These are the GageMaster PM2 motors, which are pretty common. And there are links in the description to where you can get these for yourself. They're really simple to use and I'll do a more in-depth tutorial on installing these at a later date so for now I'll just give you a very quick overview. First I'm just screwing the motors to the bottom of the baseboard underneath each point with the rod pushing up through the holes I made in the previous episode. One that was right at the front of the layout did cause me a little bit of a problem as the wooden frame ended up being in the way. As you can see though, I was able to carve out a space using the Dremel and a chisel just so that I could get the motor into the right position. I then needed to solder three wires to each motor, a positive, a negative and a common, and these wires will all feed back to my control panel. Now with there being two wires from each motor plus the common, that is a lot of separate feeds to run back to my switches. So to make things easier, I've decided to use a D-sub multi-pin connector instead. This means the wires from my switches will all run to this one connector through one big wire loom which plugs into another D-sub connector on the layout and from here the feeds can all spread out to each individual point. Now on the back of the connector you'll see there are these tabs so that I can attach a wire to each pin. So I'll start off just by adding a little bit of solder to these. With that done, I'm then going to move on to the very long job of soldering up all the wires to each of these pins, making sure I get the correct wire for each pin. As you can probably imagine though, this is quite a slow and fiddly process, so I'm not going to make you sit through the whole thing. So there we go, these are the last few wires being connected and while I was attaching all these wires for the points I decided to also add in a feed for the track power and a lighting bus too. That means that when the layout is complete I'll only need to connect one wire from the control panel to the layout. And you may also notice that I've added some heat shrink around each wire too which will just stop them from touching and shorting each other out. And so with the connector wired up now it's time to connect the other ends of the wires to the point switches. Now I found this really handy bank of switches which comes on a PCB board. I'd had enough of soldering at this point so thankfully to connect the wires to these switches I can just use the screw terminals at the back. If you're thinking about adding point motors to your own layout I can highly recommend this. It's basically like having a mini lever frame from a signal box ready made up for you and as before there are links in the description to where you can get these. Of course, I've got the switches wired to one connector, but I need a way for this to join onto the layout. So with a second multi-pin connector in hand, I'm now marking out a space towards the rear of the baseboard where I want to fit this. And using a drill, I can then just make two holes at either end of the marks. And then I connected these up using the Dremel.
filing was needed just to clean up the cut slightly, but after that I was able to fit the connector in place really easily. I then did have to solder all the wires from the points on the layout to the back of this connector just like I did for the switches. I didn't film it though because it was basically the same process as before, but here is what it looks like now from the underside. The last little step was just to remove the excess rods you can see sticking up from the points. I'll use the Dremel again for this just to initially cut the majority of it off, and then gradually grind the remainder down so it doesn't catch on any of the locos. So now I can finally connect everything up and see if we've got working points. First I'll take power from the accessory output on my Gauge Master controller and I'm going to attach this into a capacitor discharge unit. Like I said, I'm going to do a more in-depth video on solenoid point motors in the future and I'll cover why I'm using this more in that, but essentially this means I get clean power for my points. The power then runs from the CDU and screws into the terminals at one end of my switch bank. The switches are already wired up to my connector, so now I'll plug an extension cable into this. And that's going to run all the way to the layout and plug into the connector I installed a moment ago. And in theory, I should now have motorized points. So let's try switching one to see if I've got this right. And there we go. That point is working exactly as I was expecting it to. So I'm very pleased with that result. And if that point is working, then the odds are the others all work too. But let's just confirm that. And yeah, you can see the points switch back and forth really nicely. Obviously the switches and the wiring is all a bit messy at the moment, but I'll make a proper little control panel for this later on. But now this is where the fun begins. With the points all wired up, that's the majority of the electrical work done and I can really start to focus more on actual modeling. Now, before we get to that, you may have noticed that in the intro to this video, I was wearing a brand new shirt. In fact, I'm still wearing it now. This is the totem for Gopher Tin, which is what I've named the 009 layout. And as I said in the first episode, that's Welsh for tight space. So a little bit of an inside joke there. And yeah, I think this looks really cool in the BR Black totem. These are available in my shop right now. The address should be at the bottom of the screen, or you can click the link in the description. And as with all my other shirts, there's a smaller logo version too, if you want something a bit more subtle. And don't forget, if you're a channel member at the driver tier, you also get a discount code to use as much as you like in my shop, as well as getting to see new episodes of this series before anyone else. So yeah, a quick little shameless plug there for my channel members. But uh, like I said, these new shirts are available now, so do go check them out if you're a fan of of this series. And now let's head back to the layout to get the track ready for a pretty major step. So the next big job is to ballast the track, but before I can do that, there are a couple of little things to do first, which will be much easier to complete before the ballast goes down. One of those is weathering the sleepers, and since this is a smaller layout, I'm going to try out a new technique that I've seen lots of other people use to great effect. This essentially just involves dry brushing the sleepers with various different colours and as you can see I'm starting out with white. The flecks of paint just catch in the moulded detail of the sleepers and it really highlights them in a nice way. Now obviously it looks a bit strange at the moment but I'm going to be adding darker colours over the top of this in just a moment. Next I repeat the same process but with brown instead. I've deliberately selected a brown that is slightly lighter than the colour of the plastic sleepers and my hope here is that this will give a bit of variation to the colour so that it's not just all one solid brown, there's a mixture of different shades in there. And that really is the crux of this technique. You're layering up different colours so that the track doesn't look so uniform. Finally, the last colour I'm going to dry brush on is black. I'm being quite sparing with this as I don't want to paint over everything I've just done, but this will tone down all the different colours nicely and bring it all together.
So what do you think? Is this a worthwhile technique? It's certainly been fun to try out and it looks all right, but I'm not sure I'd necessarily have the patience to do it on a larger layout. It'll be interesting to see what it looks like when the ballast goes down too, so it may make more of a difference then. Now, something else I always like to do is paint the sides of the rails. I've done this on all my layouts, and this is something that I do think makes a huge difference. I generally tend to use rail match sleeper grime for this. Again, there's a link in the description. And basically, this process makes the track look a lot less toy-like by removing the shiny sides. I also find it makes the rails look much finer too, as the only part showing is the very top. That said, it is always a time-consuming process, but like I said, I do think it's time well spent, and it makes the track look so much better in my opinion. At this point, I just want to take a quick moment to thank D-Rails for sponsoring this series. Like I said in the intro, they are genuinely one of my favourite model railway retailers to use. They have an amazing range of products and they also give you free delivery if your order is over £20, which is fantastic. I have to say though that their customer service is absolutely phenomenal. I mean, they're always really helpful, really friendly, and anytime I've had to contact them in the past, they always get things sorted out really quickly. So yeah, if you're thinking about building your own 009 layout, or any model railway for that matter, definitely check out D-Rails at derails.co.uk or click the link down in the description. I really can't recommend them enough and I'm so pleased that they're sponsoring this series. And now let's head back to the layout. So I've weathered the sleepers, I've painted the sides of the rails and it's time to ballast the track, right? Well, not quite. You see, I also realized it would be a good idea to get the structure for the platform in place first so that I could ballast right up to the edge of it. Of course, that now means I have to make the platform, so I guess I better get to it. I've decided I'm going to use foam board again to create the platforms, just like I did on my main layout. This time though, because the platforms don't need to be as high, I'm just going to use a single 5mm sheet instead. As you can see, I've marked out a very rough template on the foam board, and the great thing about this stuff is that it's very easy to cut through. Now in addition to the basic shape of the platform, I also want to add a textured face to it too. For this I'll be using some Slater's plastic art I have left over from a previous project, which has a nice stone pattern embossed into it. With several 5mm strips cut, I'm now going to glue these to the front facing edge of the platform. You'll notice as well there's an overhang at each end with the ramps that lead down to ground level and I'll fill these sections in later when the platform is actually installed on the layout. the embossed stone, I'm first going to give the entire plastic art area a coat of grey. This doesn't need to be perfect by any means, and in fact, if any of the original tan colour shows through the paint, it works quite well to create some variation to the stone colour. With this being a Welsh themed layout, I then created a slate blue colour by mixing some of the grey paint with a little bit of blue acrylic. This is then dry brushed on in random areas, again just to create some variation to the colour. Now I know this looks a bit odd at the moment, but trust me, it'll all come together as soon as I add the final layer of paint. Finally, I'm adding a black wash over the entire face of the platform, which is literally just watered down black acrylic. Just like when I was weathering the sleepers earlier, this tones all the colours down, brings out the detail, and also acts like a layer of dirt over everything too. Mm -hmm. 
So with the stonework painted, it's time to install the platform on the layout. That said, I do need to make sure it's not too close to the track so that I have enough clearance for any locos and rolling stock. As you can see, I'm using my tram engine here as a guide since it has skirts that come right down over the wheels, making the loco wider at the base than most others. And with the position worked out, it's time to fix the platform in place. I'll just add some super glue to the underside and then it can really easily be pushed down into position. And I know this isn't the best shot in the world, but since I only did this the once, it's unfortunately the only one I've got. As I'm sure you can imagine, it's quite hard keeping an eye on the camera monitor while also making sure you don't get super glue over everything. And I'll also add a little bit of glue to the plasticard ramps too, just so that these can follow the very slight curve of the track on the points. And with that, I'm now ready to start ballasting. For the ballast, I'm going to use Woodland Scenics Fine Grey. Usually, I prefer to use the medium grey ballast when I'm working in double O gauge, but I figured I'd try out the fine stuff this time round. I'll be using the standard technique for this process, which I've demonstrated plenty of times on the channel already. In fact, I've even done a whole video on it if you want to check that out. First, I'm putting the ballast over the track and spreading it around as much as possible to fill all the gaps between the sleepers. Right now, I'm only ballasting the sections of plane track. I'll leave the points unballasted for the moment and I'll go back and do these separately later on. Now, to remove any particles from the top of the sleepers, I just lightly tap the rails with the end of a paintbrush or pencil. The vibrations cause any stray bits of ballast to jump around and after a few taps, they generally settle in the gaps instead. And now it comes to adding the glue. As always, this is a 50-50 mix of PVA and water with a couple of drops of washing up liquid added in just to break the surface tension. And before I put the glue down, I just give the ballast a spray of water with a mister. I found this helps the glue penetrate into the ballast more, but it does have to be a fine mister, otherwise you'll end up just moving the ballast around. I then add the glue a section at a time using a syringe and it gradually seeps into all the ballast. And that means that when it dries, it'll be locked together nicely and will also hold the track in a really solid position too. And if the track does start to dry out at all, I just give it a few extra sprays with the mister before putting the glue down. Now I will need to leave this overnight as the watery PVA glue does take quite a while to dry. So for now there's nothing else I can do but wait. Or at least that's what I thought. Right, bit of a disaster. Um, it's currently close to midnight so I don't look completely presentable at the moment. Um, basically I finished filming hours ago. Uh, I just came in now to check before I went to bed to see how the glue was setting and I discovered that somehow the glue had all run into pretty much all of the points on the layout, which is an absolute disaster. Um, I've no idea how this happened. I guess the glue that I mixed up must have been more runny than usual. It must have had more water in it, um, which is weird because I thought actually when I was putting it on, it looked thicker than usual. So. Yeah, don't know what's going on there, but uh, clearly I've made a mistake somewhere. Um, I've tried to mop up as much of the glue as possible, but yeah, I really don't know. I mean, firstly, the big issue will be whether the points will actually still move once the glue has set. Um, the other thing will be, will there be residue glue on the blades? Um, there was plenty of glue on the blades earlier before I mopped it up. I'm pretty certain I haven't managed to get all of it off, so it's probably going to affect the connectivity of the points. I could add jumper wires to the um, to the points, but it's kind of a bit late to do that now. I've started ballasting, because you'd normally do that before ballasting. Uh, basically, yeah, it's a total disaster, and it could throw the whole project into jeopardy. Like I said, I've mopped up as much of it as I can. 
at this point I don't know what more I can do other than just hope that it somehow works in the morning. <laughs>